price action is king. That's what you'll hear from many traders, especially when they're arguing about whether it's better to trade with or without indicators. But what is price action and is it really king? Well, as the name implies, price action refers to, well, the movement of an asset's price over time. Typically, traders will analyze how prices have moved, trying to find patterns within the seemingly random nature of price movements. This, in theory, can help them form expectations for future price movements. But is this just reading into the tea leaves? Well, not really. Take a look at the chart of any major asset and you'll likely see that there is some sort of pattern to it. To boil it down, what drives prices are the buyers and sellers in the markets and analyzing price movements is about understanding how traders influence prices and vice versa. Now that we've touched on what price action is and why people analyze it, let's look at how they do it. Well, there are many tools and frameworks that traders used to interpret price action. We'll go through some of them in a bit, but make sure you watch this video to the end to learn about their limitations as well. Simple analysis can be done with line charts, but it's more common for traders to use the candlestick chart. Line charts only record the closing prices for a market, whereas candlesticks display the open, high, low, and closing prices. The additional information on candlestick charts allow for more in-depth analysis and can make patterns easier to observe. For example, the bullish engulfing pattern is a smaller red-bodied candle engulfed by a following larger green-bodied candle. In this pattern, the first candle closed at a price lower than its open price, and the next candle then opens around the previous candle's close, but then with enough eager buyers, closes higher than the previous candle's opening price. When this pattern appears after a period of selling, it's usually taken as a signal of an incoming reversal to the upside. The story ascribed to the pattern is that buyers had overtaken the sellers and gained control of the market at least at that particular period of time. Now, this is just one of many examples of candlestick patterns that traders may find useful. Besides candlestick patterns that usually only look at a couple of individual candles, there are also chart patterns, which look at larger formations. One well-known example that you've probably heard of is the head and shoulders pattern, which indicates a bullish to bearish trend reversal. This pattern consists of three peaks, the highest one being the head and the two peaks to the sides being the shoulders. The most straightforward story this tells is that sellers are taking control of the market after after an initial period of price increase and that a potential reversal to the downside is coming. Now on the flip side, the inverse head and shoulders works in the same way, but flipped around. Another staple in analyzing price action is support and resistance levels. The idea behind support and resistance levels is that price movements will reach certain levels that act like a floor or ceiling for price. Prices are expected to pause and reverse at these levels due to increased buying or selling at those points. However, when prices eventually break through these levels and go further upwards or downwards, the previous support or resistance levels will be flipped. One of the examples of this is historical price levels, such as Bitcoin's prior cycle's all-time high price. If you zoom out on Bitcoin's chart, you can find Bitcoin's 2017 historical all-time high acting as support for the 2023 bear market bottom. So why do random lines drawn on charts work as support or resistance levels? Well, it all goes back to market psychology. The market collectively has a tendency to assign meaning to otherwise random or meaningless information such as the price of an asset. Because 
At the end of the day, market participants are humans and are subjected to influences such as fear, greed, and herd instinct. This phenomenon can be seen when prices reach a round number, such as Bitcoin at 30,000. This level was a major support for Bitcoin in 2021 and a major resistance in 2023. Dramatic moves both to the upside and downside happened when this level was broken. Even meme numbers can be considered as psychological price levels. What's 9 plus 10? 21. It's entirely possible Bitcoin topped at 69,000 simply because enough traders thought that 69 was a funny number to put their sell orders at. Well, so far we have only scratched the surface of the ways traders interpret price action. Many other forms of analyzing price action include trend lines, channels, and even frameworks such as the Elliott wave or auction market theory. But what about indicators. Well, the thing is, price action is the basis for the overwhelming majority of technical indicators out there. They typically take in price data in relation to time, apply a mathematical function, and visualize the data on a graph. In doing so, however, they generally abstract away a lot of information from its source, and that's why they can be a crutch for those over-reliant on them, leading to an oversimplified view of of the underlying price action that they are based on. Many seasoned technical traders often favor understanding price action without indicators and only then carefully using them as a supporting tool. Of course, patterns and theories do not play out all the time and more than often will do something totally opposite to what the textbooks tell you. Markets are driven by living, breathing people with emotions that are often fleeting. The market may be fearful for a moment just to shift into greed the next. Therefore, while price analysis tools can help contextualize price action into something logical, the market does not always operate on logic. So the success that you'll find with trading based on patterns or frameworks are probabilistic, simply due to the inherent degree of randomness and unpredictability of people. Being on trading forums, discords, and Twitter threads will also tell you something about interpreting price action. That is, it can can be highly subjective. No one trader seems to agree perfectly with another when looking at the same chart, whether it's due to differing biases, analysis methods, or emotions. And besides that, it's possible that two traders can profit from opposing interpretations of the same market. And on the flip side, traders with similar ideas could have vastly different trade outcomes. This could be due to differing executions, different time horizons, and price expectations, or levels of of risk tolerance. Despite all this debate and uncertainty, there is one thing that all seasoned traders can agree on about price action. To be good at reading price action, you have to keep reading charts over a long enough period of time. That said, understanding price action is just one component of trading. Managing your risk and emotions are equally as important for successful trading. And that is why you need a rock solid plan that details every aspect of your trading. If you don't already have one, be sure to check out our video on building yours right here.